All right, good morning. Uh, so um, if we look at what, what's happened here, uh, you know, in the last 12 months, I think it's been pretty exciting times. Um, just looking at it from the, the big picture uh, scale, the, the uranium sector is much, much stronger. Uh, the price of the commodity is up some 50% from where it was, uh, you know, even earlier this year. Uh, our share price has increased about 250% or, or thereabouts to in the last 12 months. So, you know, I think uranium is being uh, quite a, you know, a, a pretty good sector to be in right now. Um, our company, very healthy. We're well capitalized. We've been able to raise money, uh, significant amounts of, of capital over the last 12 months. Um, currently sitting with around $50 million in the Treasury. Uh, we are just beginning our feasibility study on the Triple R deposit. Um, we came off of a, a pre-feasibility in 2019, which uh, showed a, a very, very robust project. Um, but And now this summer we, we've kick-started off with the, with the feasibility study. Not uh, only geotechnical and engineering uh, focused uh, on the feasibility study, but we're also building the resource as well by adding in uh, some zones that are nearby that uh, currently drilled an inferred category, moving it up the, the classification chain to get it up into indicated and therefore uh, growth into the, into the mine plan to be able to be used in the feasibility study too. So, um, and that, and I think we're progressing very well too on uh, uh, on discussions and relationships with uh, with our local indigenous groups as well. We signed a, a engagement and capacity funding agreement with the CRDN uh, back in March earlier this year, uh, and expect similar kind of news I think um, over the next few months uh, with with other key important uh, indigenous First Nation groups. So just for a little bit of geographic context, here's the Athabasca Basin uh, located in northern Saskatchewan, basically sitting geographically right in the middle of Canada. Um, if you look at the last uh, 50 years or so of, of mining out of the Athabasca Basin, it's all been focused primarily on the eastern side. There's been a, a little bit of activity on the, on the west side. Clough Lake was a past producer. Um, I think they wrapped that that deposit up in, in uh, 2000, but um, we made a discovery in 2012 out in the southwest side of the basin, the Triple R, uh, significant deposit, next gen followed up with the Aero deposit. You know, it's, I think what's, what's kind of clear is that the next generation of, of uranium mines to be built in the Athabasca Basin are going to be coming out of the southwest side. So it is a new emerging mining district in a very well-known and mature uranium uh, geogra or geologic uh, setting of the Athabasca Basin. Some of the results we've seen from the, the pre-feasibility study, uh, I think what's exceptional here is that the Triple R uh, promises to be one of the lowest operating costs uh, uranium mines. Um, our numbers we saw in the pre-feasibility just over $7 US a pound, U308, um, which is, you know, it puts you in the same category of, of some of the lowest cost producers anywhere, uh, rivaling even that in, in Kazakhstan. Um, the short construction time, we're looking at uh, three years to build and start pulling ore out of the ground once we have uh, permits in order to be able to build and operate. Um, we are looking at this deposit now strictly as an underground mining scenario. Uh, we have looked at it as an open pit because it is near surface, but we've decided to focus uh, on this being an underground only operation, which made more sense uh, all around. It was a smaller environmental footprint. Um, it uh, met with a lot better acceptance too, and we were discussing the project with local uh, the local people that, that live up there. Um, I think it's somewhat uh, more straightforward and easier for on the regulatory front as well. And uh, the bottom line economics were stronger. So from every measure, uh, you know, the, the project is, uh, you know, certainly the way to go forward on it is as an underground mine. Um, and a strong, impressive NPV looking at $702 million uh, using an 8%. 
So a timeline on, on what we're up to. Um, as I mentioned, we are underway now in our feasibility study, which we kicked off this summer uh, with the phase one field work. Um, wrapped into the feasibility, it, it sits within what we call the environmental assessment phase, so the EA. Um, what that is more of a regulatory uh, term, it, it means that we're submitting the project for a project description to the provincial and federal regulators, basically gets your file on, on the books. They know that our intention is to continue to advance the triple R and, uh, and move it forward through eventual production. So within the, the feasibility, we'll be able to wrap that up in, um, at the end of 2022, so another uh, 13, 14 months from now, the feasibility study will be complete. And, um, and then we basically will submit the project for the, uh, the environmental impact assessment phase. Um, the timing on, on that would be, uh, through the EIS, would be around 24 to 36 months, we expect. Um, so assuming you know, we, we navigate successfully through that, that part of the, uh, the regulatory process, you're looking at receiving licenses to start building in, in and around 2026, 27. Uh, remember, three years to construction. So you're looking at a project that can be a producing asset uh, towards the end of this decade, 29, uh, 30. That's, that's really the, the time frame we're looking at. Um, and we do consider, uh, you know, our expectation is that the uranium market will continue to improve. It's already uh, so much better than it was even, as I mentioned, just 12 years ago, or 12 months ago. But um, the future looks very bright, and I think we're at the beginning of a, of a long-term bull in the uranium sector. Uh, some of our corporate information, um, share price is uh, sitting at uh, multi-year highs these days. Uh, we recently hit $1.25, which I think was a price we haven't seen since 2014. Um, the market cap is as strong as it's ever been uh, historically in the company. So we're, uh, uh, today's prices were probably around $700 million market cap, Canadian dollars. Um, I mentioned we have almost $50 million in the treasury, which is enough to get us through the feasibility uh, work. Um, and our uh, shareholder register, we've, uh, I think we've grown the institutional ownership uh, significantly. Um, 12 months ago, we were below 10% institutional ownership. It's now almost a quarter of the, the equity uh, of the companies held by institutionals. Um, we do have a significant strategic partner with the China General Nuclear Power, uh, one of the Chinese state-owned utilities, a very, very large and important utility. So they own a 15% um, stake in the company. Uh, and we also have an offtake agreement with, uh, with CGN as well. So they can have up to 35% of our production, of which they still pay market price for. But at least we, you know, I think you've got a third of your production that's, uh, that's already has a, an end user. So I think that's an important part of the, of the equation. Um, you'll see our research coverage continues to grow. There's a lot more analysts now starting to get back into the uranium sector. And, uh, and I think these are some excellent names in the business. Um, our, our list continues to grow. So we're covered by analysts in Canada, over here uh, in, in London, also down in the US as well. Um, so you know, I just think you know, overall the uranium sector is really a, a remarkable place to be. I think you'll want to have a look at, uh, you know, look at the companies in the uranium sector. It should be part of your portfolio. And if you look at fission uranium, um, I think you'll see a pretty, pretty exciting story. So thank you very much.